Well, hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Chantal Aubrey and I'm the Manager of Business Development here at Emergence. I'm pleased to be your moderator today and to welcome you all to this CRM webinar. Just a few housekeeping items before we get started. In order to keep the flow of the presentation moving along and on schedule, the audience is on mute today, but we still want to keep this interactive. So we ask that you please type in your questions in the side panel and we'll review and answer all of them at the end of the presentation. Now, because of you, um, a few of you are new to Emergence uh, in attendance today, I'm going to give a super quick overview of Emergence. Um, we are a Bermuda-based organization and we are a business uh, solutions provider. Our primary focus and what we're probably known for the most is the implementation and support of business platforms that, such as Dynamics GP and Dynamics 365, which of course uh, also includes Dynamics CRM. Uh, but we also have a large focus on corporate performance management, corporate uh, reporting, business intelligence, and business automation. Um, we have a staff of 35 people, and included in that uh, count are solution architects, uh, business analysts, accountants, and functional and technical consultants. We have people who have been with the organization for 10, 15, and even 20 years, but we also have a lot of new people. Emergence has hired eight people in the last year alone, and our recruitment efforts are ongoing. In fact, um, two new people just signed on yesterday. So. Um, they're, they've got two more people coming on board. So we're definitely in growth mode, which is always a great place to be. We have over 150 clients here in Bermuda, many of which have offices overseas. So we support many of those offices as well. Uh, we have a balanced portfolio of financial services companies, distribution companies, and local and international businesses. And finally, we have access to a large network of trusted solution partners. Microsoft has a very large ecosystem of third-party vendors. So we spend a lot of time evaluating new partners to bring solutions that meet the requirements of our clients and the Bermuda market as a whole. Finally, um, I'd like to just call out that our company is broken up into six practices. Um, those practices, oh, sorry, I just minimized there, um, are the finance and performance management, human capital management, operations management, customer relationship management, which is CRM, technology services, and business intelligence and reporting. Um, go back. Sorry about that. Um, so now let's get to why we're here today. Microsoft uh, brought together all its Dynamics products under a single offering known as Dynamics 365. The rebrand saw the evolution of CRM to five individual Dynamics 365 apps, sales, customer service, field service, project service automation, and marketing. Uh, that resulted um, in customers being able to pick and choose the apps they need. They can be accessed via one portal and they can work seamlessly together. So today's webinar is going to focus more specifically on the customer service app. Uh, now you'll notice in the side panel that we've made two Microsoft files available to you for the duration of this webinar. The first is the 2017 State of Global Customer Service Report and the second is a CRM data sheet from Microsoft. So please feel free to download those at any point during today's webinar. Now I'd like to introduce you to our presenter today. Matt Clark joined the Emergence team in October of last year by way of the UK. He's been a Microsoft Dynamics CRM consultant for over five years. He started out in a pre-sales capacity, then moved to consultancy where he now completes the full analysis, design, and development of CRM solutions. One of his most recent projects was for an office fit-out company. The aim of that project was to use Dynamics CRM to consolidate all of their disparate sales information that was being held by regional teams. On top of that, additional processes were put in place to allow them to plan and manage their key accounts. So without any further ado, I'll hand it over to you, Matt. Uh, thanks, Sancho. Sancho. Um, to start off with, I'd like to talk a bit about um, the customer service um, processes that can be covered by uh, the CRM solution uh, get by showing a slide that gives an overview uh, of those processes. Um, if we look at the red box here, uh, so there's enablement 
the processes that can be enabled by a CRM system uh, cover sort of technical support and a help desk scenario. So where you have uh, an internal team uh, possibly helping uh, internal resources or external uh, customers to resolve and uh, issue their cases. We can, as part of that, set up a team to service uh, and work with uh, customers on the orders that they've placed with us. So give them the ability to review uh, and resolve cases that come in regarding orders that customers have placed with you as a business. On the side of that, uh, we have uh, complaints management. And this is sort of the issues that come in from your customers uh, to the business uh, regarding the interactions that they've had with you. So the ability to pick those complaints up and take them through to resolution to make the uh, client happy. And sort of covering all of that is sort of overall case management. And so this is any sort of query that you have coming into the business uh, that you need to pick up uh, and resolve for the customer. Um, so a scenario that I've uh, dealt with that in the past is freedom of information requests uh, for uh, sort of UK government departments. So for them, that is a, a case that's coming in. It's not necessarily a complaint, uh, but it is a process that needs to be logged. Uh, reviewed at each stage uh, and then resolved for uh, the incoming inquiry. To assist with that sort of case management process, we also have the ability to set up uh, knowledge bases. Uh, and we'll take a look at those today and sort of what they entail. Uh, but it's essentially um, a, a grouping of uh, answers that could help the customer either resolve uh, an issue themselves or help your internal resources understand the steps that should need to be uh, taken for them to resolve the issue. Uh, another area that we uh, won't be looking at today but uh, is uh, can be enabled with CRM is the ability to uh, optimize uh, and capacity plan the workforce, uh, your customer service workforce. Uh, by using the data that's generated by the CRM system and the sort of volume of cases and the particular areas that your resources are working on, uh, we can use that information to understand where there may be holes that need to be plugged with inside the business and understand where uh, you need to sort of look at investing uh, in terms of your customer service workforce. Um, so on top of that, uh, we will just talk a bit about the Dynamics 365 as a, as a platform itself. Um, Chantel has touched on this herself briefly, uh, but this visualization gives you a good overview of the Dynamics 365 uh, as a platform. So in the center there, we have what Microsoft sort of brand uh, Dynamics 365, which covers uh, project service, sales, um, customer service, which we'll be looking at today, uh, operations, uh, marketing uh, and field service, which can also be sort of considered part of customer service, which but, but we won't be looking at today. So field service gives you the ability to schedule uh, and dispatch resources uh, to your clients um, based on uh, either issues that come in uh, from them or uh, for ongoing maintenance and other scenarios, uh, other scenarios like that. And Dynamics 365 sits on top of uh, Office 365, which is Microsoft's uh, hosted um, office uh, platform. So on there you can get things like PowerPoint, Office, uh, Hoster Exchange, uh, SharePoint. And because they're all sort of Microsoft products, uh, all of them integrate uh, natively. And to the right of that, we have the uh, reporting uh, areas, which obviously sit on top of the same platform. So you have the ability to use uh, Power BI, which is uh, Microsoft's online um, reporting platform, uh, as well as plug into some of the services that they offer in uh, Azure. Uh, so that it covers the um, Internet of Things suite uh, and the um, Cortana uh, intelligence suite. And there are some nice scenarios that can be covered uh, using the Internet of Things and the field service uh, module, uh, which sort of allow you to uh, act uh, when you see issues coming up on customers' devices that are connected as part of the Internet of Things uh, to then dispatch uh, resources to go and uh, go and resolve those. On top of this stack, we have the um, basically apps that can be added on or plugged onto these uh, various modules. So Microsoft uh, built this platform out to be quite uh, sort of generic and customizable to uh, various scenarios uh, across multiple industries. Uh, and because of that, it can be quite generic. So partners, uh, so uh, partners like Emergence, uh, and then Microsoft themselves uh, have built add-ons to the platform, which would uh, allow you to meet uh, specific requirements, uh, either in different scenarios or industries. And then below that, uh, there are some additional um, applications available on the Office 365 platform, 
one of those is uh, Microsoft Flow uh, and the Common Data Model, uh, which allow you to basically integrate uh, the various apps and other um, other uh, systems that you may have within the business using the integration platform. Uh, so that's it for sort of overview uh, of what, uh, Microsoft Dynamics CRM uh, and the uh, processes that can be covered by that. So now we're going to jump into the system and take a look at what uh, all of this sort of actually looks like. So if I open up uh, CRM here, I'm currently uh, accessing it through a browser. Uh, it's also available through uh, various apps. So there are apps on available, all available on all the sort of uh, major app stores. But users can access this system and work with it. So if you've got users on the go, uh, it's a sort of very handy way for them to jump on the system, uh, review any information and make any changes that they may need. As I open up the system, uh, the first area that's going to be displayed to me as a user is the, uh, the dashboard area. And this essentially is designed to show me information that's going to be relevant to me as a user as soon as I access the system. So from here, uh, I get a view of all of the information that I should uh, sort of care about and should be reacting to and working on. So from a customer service representative's uh, um, perspective, they have a view of the cases that they're currently working on and the current status of those cases. Um, a view of where those cases have come from, so through the various channels, and we'll talk about uh, those various channels as we sort of walk through uh, the system. But some examples here are sort of the live chat, uh, email, uh, phone. We have a, a what's new panel here, um, and this essentially gives you an update on actions that have been performed on records that you care about in the system since you last accessed it. So with with CRM systems, there could be multiple people working on the sort of records or cases that you're you know, that you're working on, and maybe putting their uh, giving their input and updating various uh, data points. If I sort of exit the system uh, and come back in and review a case that I've been working on, it can be hard for me to tell what changes have been made possibly by other users since I last accessed the system. And so what this does, it gives you the ability to flag those changes to the user so that they understand that possibly one of their colleagues has come in uh, and spoken to that client regarding the case and now the problem has uh, progressed. Uh, so it gives you that view so now they don't know, they, they don't have to go and sort of contact them to, to progress it further. Um, the cases by priority. So when we take a look at the cases um, that have been raised by customers in the system, we have the ability to flag uh, the priority of those cases. So if they have been, um, if it is uh, an urgent request, or we would mark it as high. And in this view here, I can get a view of my cases uh, where they're sat in those particular uh, buckets. And then we have um, instant type. So the type of request that has been raised by the customer. Now we have a view there of all the cases that I own and the current um, reason behind those cases being raised. And then uh, my activities. So we'll talk a bit more about more of those uh, as we walk through the system. Uh, but essentially CRM allows you to track uh, your interactions with a customer. So whether that be an outbound phone call, um, a task that you're creating for yourself to go and complete in the future. And this adds, adds a nice reminder for you to go and complete that task. Um, or emails, uh, Dynamic CRM integrates with your Outlook. Um, so you have the ability to track uh, any interactions that you've had with a client via email back into the CRM system. Uh, and that will be then be displayed uh, on their uh, customer account, as well as the case that you may be talking to them about at that current, uh, current time. So any other colleagues viewing either that customer's record or uh, the particular incident that they've raised uh, will be able to see that you've interacted with that customer either via a phone call and what was discussed or the email that you've sent with uh, obviously all of the information in that email. Um, as we take a look at navigating the system uh, along the ribbon at the top, um, if I do this drop down here, it's going to show me uh, the areas that are available to me as a customer service uh, representative. Um, as we sort of looked at earlier, CRM uh, or customer engagement is a larger platform and there are various other processes that can be enabled through this. So we sort of looked at sales, marketing, um, field service and project service. All of the areas in the system uh, can be restricted uh, to only show the users the, um, the relevant sort of areas that they should be working in. So as a customer service representative, I'm only going to see uh, the pieces of, that I need to work with. So uh, the accounts, so that's going to be the customers that uh, I'm possibly working with day to day from a company perspective. 
Uh, and then within those accounts, uh, we would have the contacts, so the individuals that we're dealing with there. Uh, they're not, they don't need to both be in the system. If you're just a more of a B2C uh, business, then you only need to have the contacts set up, so accounts won't be relevant. Uh, and then the cases, which is the uh, main area that we're working with today uh, and reviewing. Dashboards, uh, which we just had a, a brief look at, and there's a couple of other dashboards I'll show you before uh, I move on. And then activities. So there, again, will be the phone calls or tasks or emails that you've, you've created for yourself or potentially for other users uh, for them to be completing uh, and, uh, and adding detail to. So if I jump back onto the dashboard area, this view was only showing me um, from a customer service representative's perspective. I can also change that um, based on my rights in the system. So currently I am able to view all of these, but you may want to restrict these so only the users have the access to the ones that are relevant to them. But if I'm a customer service manager, I'd have access to the sort of overview dashboard. And this is going to show me information that's going to be more relevant to me as a, as a, as a manager. So it's not just going to show me um, the cases that I own that, and that I'm working on. It's going to show me the cases across the system that are being worked on by all of the users. So I have that overall view of who's working on what and the progress that they're making. So here, um, as, a, as a manager, for me, it's going to be uh, relevant for me to see uh, the number of cases by a particular resource or customer service resource that we have working on them. And from this little view here, I can actually drill down on this information to find out uh, and get a bit more detail on this. So what if I do, if I um, pop this out to review the records that are making up this particular chart. So here I have a list of all of the records that are currently uh, making up this chart here on the left. And I can start to drill down on this. So if I want to review uh, the cases that only Jamie's working on, if I click in there uh, in, the, um, in the chart on the right, it's going to filter uh, those cases that are making up that particular section uh, on, on that uh, in the right. So now uh, if I jump back into uh, navigation and take a look at uh, the accounts in the system. Uh, so if I jump into accounts and take a look at how a view of records is uh, built up. Um, so by default, uh, it's only showing me uh, my active accounts in the system. So again, uh, this is only filtering and showing me the relevant pieces of information that I should uh, really need to see as a user. I can change that view to show me all of the active accounts, um, but it may just not be relevant for me to see all that information. And for quick access and ease of navigation through the system, it's easier for me to just see the ones that I actually have a relationship with. And obviously this can be configured uh, either to be a hard block, so I only ever see the ones that I have a relationship with, or it can be config configured uh, to show me all of the ones in the system. Depending on requirements, that's um, that's sort of the flexibility of the system in terms of what can be shown to uh, the users. If I jump into a um, particular record, uh, what I can do is actually search for, through this list to find a record that's going to be relevant to me or the one that I want to work with. So if I search uh, both and jump in. Here we get a view uh, of what a record looks like in the system. And this is going to be uh, an overview or a pretty standard form layout that you'll see across all of the uh, record sets that we'll be uh, working with today. So at the top, we have the name of that particular record. So this is an account, so it's a company that we work with. So we're capturing pieces of information for that particular uh, company. Here I can see sort of their annual revenue and number of employees. And then at the top, left of generally every form in the system, we're going to have the high level information on that particular record. So for an account, we obviously want to capture their name, uh, their phone number, um, their website. We can make relationships between uh, records in the system. So if uh, this account has a parent, so it's a subsidiary of another uh, company that we deal with, we can make that link in the system. And so other users who are possibly working with that parent account or sub accounts would be able to understand that there's a sort of group uh, of records on accounts in the system. And if they're a sales rep uh, and they're pursuing an opportunity in one of those subsidiaries, uh, it may be something that they want to broaden their horizon uh, outside of just that subsidiary and look at uh, all the other uh, units within that business to possibly push that uh, sales proposition. Uh, if we scroll down, we have some more pieces of information here. So the address, uh, obviously, of the account, and that's being used to generate uh, this uh, map view of that particular account in the system and where they are uh, actually um, on the world. And all of this is configurable. So 
this is sort of the out of the box um, data points that are being captured. And based on your requirements for capturing a piece of information against, say, the account or the contacts within that account or the uh, instance that are raised by those uh, accounts, all of that is configurable. Uh, and we can work with you to make sure that the piece of information that are being captured uh, are relevant. Um, in the center of a form, uh, we'll have the uh, activity pane. Uh, and this here is going to show us uh, all the activities that have been logged against this particular account. So any phone calls uh, that have been made to uh, either this account or contacts within this account uh, will be displayed here. So I can see that one of my colleagues has actually made a, a call in to this particular customer. And so there's an, another couple of my colleagues. And that allows me to have an overview of the recent interactions that have been made with this particular, um, particular customer. Say I'm a customer service representative. And I want to come here just to uh, review what the current status of this account is uh, in, term, in regards to the business. And I see that there have been a lot of uh, calls and possibly opportunities that have been discussed with that particular client. I may want to reach out to the, um, the sales rep that's possibly dealing with them just to flag uh, any sort of incidents or cases that have been raised by this particular uh, customer, just as they may hinder the possible sales process that they're go currently going through. Again, we have the uh, the post pane. So this is the uh, panel that we saw uh, on the customer service representative dashboard, which was giving us an all up view of the uh, changes that have been made to records uh, since I last accessed the system. Uh, for That was a global view. Uh, and this is just going to give me a view of the changes that have been made to this record since uh, just this record in particular. So here I can view any changes that any of my colleagues may have made or, uh, or, or to this particular record. We have the assistant here, and we'll take a look at that a bit uh, down the line. Uh, basically, this gives us uh, some detail uh, and possible actions that we need to perform on this particular record uh, at that particular moment in time. Uh, we then have notes. So this gives us the ability to type um, sort of long form notes against this particular record in the system and also uh, attach files to that note. So if there's a particular uh, document that I want to store in the system so other users can access it, it can be attached here. Um, but we can also use the integration to uh, SharePoint to store those documents uh, as well. So if you have users across the business who may not have access to CRM um, due to licensing, uh, but they do have access to SharePoint, then they can uh, also access those documents instead of them just having stored within uh, CRM itself. Down the right side of a form, uh, we're generally going to have a list of all of the records that are related to this particular uh, record. So in the case of an account, uh, we're going to see the contacts that are related to that account, so the individuals that we deal with within that particular um, account. Um, and then below that, we have uh, the cases. So this is uh, relevant from a customer service perspective. It's going to show me all of the uh, cases that have currently been raised by this account um, and are, and are uh, active. So it may be that I'm speaking with a particular individual inside this uh, account and I can see that they've, uh, and they're looking to raise a, a new incident with us, a new case for us to resolve. Uh, for me, uh, the starting point would be to come here and just review to see if that case has possibly been logged by someone else within that business and maybe being dealt with by one of my uh, colleagues. So this gives uh, you as a customer service representative a view of uh, the current cases that are open. Uh, but it also gives a view to the other users across the business. So again, any sales or marketing reps, uh, representatives that may be reviewing uh, that particular account or contacts within that account to understand uh, any current issues that are being uh, that have been open with that customer. Again, if I jump through to the contact uh, against this particular account. Here we will see a very sort of similar form layout. Again, we have the overview information there of this particular person that we deal with. We have their role, um, phone numbers, again, address. And then we have, uh, again, the activity pane in the center, uh, and then those related records here on the right. So any recent cases that that particular contact has raised with us uh, and any recent uh, opportunities. So that's from a, from a sales perspective that they have raised with us. Again, uh, this can be uh, configured to meet your data capture requirements. So the main area we'll be looking at today is uh, cases. So this is the sort of main record set that a customer service rep will be uh, working in. So this is going to be all of the incidents that have been raised uh, by uh, the particular 
uh, customers uh, and their current, it will show you their current status and also capture all of the pieces of information through the uh, case process. And what we're going to do today is walk through uh, that particular uh, case process. Uh, before we start that, I just want to talk about sort of the origin uh, of a case. So here we have a few examples of uh, inbound methods that uh, a case or an incident can come into the business uh, that can be enabled through uh, CRM. Um, so the two we'll be looking at today are email uh, and web. Uh, but there are other options. So we can set up um, uh, chat facilities uh, integrated with your website and also um, telephone um, telephone ability to have inbound uh, cases come through the uh, telephone. So as I said, today we'll be looking at this uh, sort of process and how a case can come into the business and, and be resolved through the um, sort of email process to start with. And then we'll be moving through to the web. So if I change my view back to uh, unassigned cases, this is essentially showing me cases in the system that have been uh, sent into the business, uh, but are yet are yet to be picked up by a customer service representative to um, to progress uh, and, and resolve that issue. So if I start off uh, as a customer, uh, I'm switching my hat here to be a customer to raise a case with a particular uh, company. So what I want to do here is just email in to uh, the business that I'm working, uh, want to raise an uh, issue with uh, regarding a printer that I've purchased from them. Uh, and I'm having some issues setting up my printer and I need some assistance from this particular company to help me, help me set up uh, that printer. So if I click send on that, what CRM will do now uh, is it will receive that email uh, through the integration with Exchange that we've uh, already sort of uh, touched on. Uh, and then it will uh, convert that email into a case. So I'll now see a case sat here under my unassigned cases for uh, printer uh, not set. As I sort of mentioned earlier, this is a case that hasn't been picked up by anyone else. So it's currently just owned by um, well, the customer service because it hasn't been assigned to any of our resources yet. So depending on the sort of flow within the business and how this needs to be set up and how sort of cases are allocated, what I can do now if I'm a manager is assign this case. I can assign it to myself or I can assign it to a particular user in the customer service, uh, customer service team. Um, so that gives me the ability to either distribute uh, tickets out to various uh, resources or um, I can pick the queue, uh, pick the incident from the queue myself and assign it to me. Um, there are also other methods uh, for automatically assigning cases. So depending on your requirements, we can uh, we can facilitate those sort of automatic sort of round robin assignments, or based on the incident that's being raised, or potentially um, the email address it came through. So if you have certain email addresses for certain departments, it can be automatically assigned based on sort of various factors like that. So now if I change my view of cases, so this is the view selector here on the top left, and it's essentially applying a filter to all of these records in the system. If I change the view to show me my active cases, it's going to show me the cases that I own uh, as, a, as a user and the ones that I'm currently working on. So these aren't the ones uh, that are unassigned. And so this is one that's just been assigned to me for um, a printer not set. So I've opened up this particular case and this came in through the inbound uh, email. Uh, that was sent by the customer. <clears throat> As you can see, this is slightly different to the other uh, forms that we've looked at for the account and contact in that it has a, a process flow along the top of the uh, form. And this is essentially to guide the users through the process that they should be going through to resolve this particular case. And this means that we can prompt them to capture the relevant pieces of information at the relevant points in the case process to ensure that we're able to report correctly on maybe the type of incidents that we've been uh, receiving, uh, the resolution for those incidents, uh, and also sort of the time it takes for that process to be completed because that whole process flow uh, is being logged in the background as to how long uh, that, that whole thing takes. If we scroll down, <clears throat> we're going to see that inbound email that was received from the customer. So I can expand that and take a look at that, that individual email. Oh, sorry, this one, that one. So here I can review the information that's been sent to me by that customer and obviously decide how I'm going to start to respond. So this is my initial sort of re review of that particular case. So I've received their email. I can see they're having issues with setting up their 
uh, printer. If I go back to um, the, uh, the case itself, I now need to start capturing additional pieces of information on that case. So I've reviewed their email, and I can now give this um, particular case uh, a subject. So I can see that it's a query uh, on one of our, our products. I know the origin was via email, and uh, that this is a question. So it's not an issue uh, per se, but they are having issues setting it up, so it, it's more of a question from their perspective. I can escalate this case, so <clears throat> currently it's in its early stages, so I, I don't feel the need to escalate it, but this is a flag that I can perform through the case uh, process if I need to escalate it to relevant people within the business. And if I mark that to yes, various uh, alerts can be triggered to um, send that case to the correct people within the business for them to uh, review. I can also select the, uh, the products that this uh, case was regarding. So if I look for the printer, <clears throat> then this allows me uh, and the business to be able to report on the various incidents that they've had regarding specific products that they sell. So if I want to do a report at the end of the month uh, or the year to see how many cases or incidents that we had raised regarding a particular product or service that we sold to a customer, uh, I can then uh, I can pull that out because that data point has been captured. Now from the information that uh, I've received from the customer, uh, I've reviewed it and I've started to add the piece of information that I can. So I then want to uh, further add particular, move this um, sort of case through the process uh, along the top. So the next stage for me is to qualify this case uh, and make sure it is correct and then set myself uh, a follow up date. So depending on your SLAs within the business, uh, you can have these automated. Uh, but for me, uh, I can also set my, my follow up dates uh, for, um, uh, manually. So I've qualified the case further. Um, I can then move it into the research stage. Uh, and for me, uh, it's want to find out um, based on what the customer's given me and my various interactions with the customer. So what I might now want to do now is put in a phone call to the customer. Um, <clears throat> so I want to let them know. So I've spoke. Uh, I've called the customer and spoke with them regarding their issue. Spoke with the customer. Um, they need assistance setting printer as a default. So I've logged my phone call uh, with the customer. And again, as that, that's now been captured, we can then report on that from a business perspective. So I can understand sort of how many outbound or inbound calls our um, customer service reps are receiving and also which customers are being contacted. So that would also now display on this customer's record so that other users in the business can see that uh, obviously I've reached out and spoke to them. So from my discussion with the customer, uh, I know that they need assistance setting up that printer as their, their default. And one nice feature that we sort of touched on uh, is, is the knowledge base records. Uh, so if I click on uh, knowledge base records, here, Based on the uh, title uh, of the case, it's searching the records that have been knowledge base uh, that's been set up within the business for all of the various uh, scenarios and that we see come in from customers for issues that they're uh, they're creating or, or looking to get resolved. And this allows me to standardize uh, the way that I respond to customers and also allows uh, knowledge to be shared across the business e easily. So if we have a new resource on boarded and it's not a query that they've dealt with before, uh, they can go straight into the knowledge base uh, and find um, an article possibly created by another one of their colleagues on how that issue should be resolved. Possibly the information that needs to be sent to the customer, which we'll be looking at in this case, or the steps that need to be taken internally to get that case resolved. So it's not always uh, an external um, article that we'll be sending to the customer. But I can see the top result for me actually is uh, I need uh, this article on how to set the printer to default. So if I click on that printer, I'm sorry, if I click on that article, I can see here that it's giving the steps for the user to go through uh, and set their particular printer uh, as a default. So I see that's going to be relevant for me and answers the customer's question. So the next thing for me to do is then I can email this content to the customer. So if I click email content, what it's going to do is going to open up an email for me in the system and it's automatically sent to the customer that the case was um, uh, created by um, how to set up your printer as default 
And you can see it's automatically appended all of those steps uh, and screenshots to this particular email. So the customer will have a set, uh, will receive this set format that has been laid out uh, by the business. And it doesn't need, uh, possibly may need some editing, um, but should cover all of the answers. I can then send that from CRM using the Exchange integration, and that would then be sent to the customer who would receive it and be able to uh, follow those steps uh, and resolve their issue. I then see that email there logged against the case itself, and obviously similar to the phone call would also show on that customer's uh, record. So then uh, we would possibly wait for feedback for, from the customer to say that their issue has been resolved, depending on your sort of internal uh, internal policies for how a sort of case should be uh, closed off. And once that communication has been had, we would then move this on to uh, resolve. And then I can mark this case uh, as resolved. So I mark as resolved. We can say the information was provided. Sent info on setup. Because I've made a 30 minute phone call to this customer. Um, it's automatically pulled that from the phone call itself, saying that uh, it, took, uh, it took 30 minutes. Um, but we can log how much actual effort this took. So for me, even though I only interacted with the customer for 30 minutes, I actually spent another uh, 30 minutes uh, researching the info. So then uh, I can click resolve and all this information is going to be logged and then will be reportable uh, inside the business. So this case is now uh, resolved and is no longer um, sort of sat with me uh, as, as a user. So if I go back to my cases and look at my active cases, I can see that that case is no longer active and I now need to start working through the list of the other cases that I have uh, open uh, and need to resolve. So that's um, a look at the sort of how the process would flow from an inbound email in terms of sort of picking up that case, uh, it being automatically created in the system from that email that was sent by the customer, uh, reviewing the information that they've sent in, adding more detail to that so that the business can report on the particular products that the case was regarding. Uh, I was then able to reach out to the customer and get additional information on the case for them to be able to uh, provide the correct information for them to resolve uh, the issue by using the knowledge base that was set in the system. So that was the flow from an uh, internal perspective from me picking up the case from uh, that initial email. Uh, but from the customer's perspective, what else did they receive after they sent that email outside of my interaction with them? So if I jump into uh, my mailbox here, uh, I can see here uh, that uh, the first thing I received was an email from uh, the business who I'd raised the issue with just to let me know that they've uh, opened a case uh, for my request and that one of the customer service representatives will be uh, in contact with them. It's also giving me a case number here, so if I need to call them and reference that case number, I can do. And that just gives the customer a peace of mind that um, this issue has actually been picked up and is being worked on. Uh, and one area here this email is also flagging is that we've recently launched the new portal, which we'll be looking at next, uh, which gives the customer the ability to sort of create and manage the cases that they've raised with us and how they can access that portal. So what we want to do, and when we look at the portal, uh, is push them towards that particular area, and, we'll, and that will become evident when we look at the, the portal itself. Uh, and what else have they received? So they've also received um, a survey. So once that case was closed, I received uh, an email that was automated by the system to say, following your recent case with, with us, uh, we would like you to complete uh, a survey to give us some feedback uh, on the experience. So this is a facility that's set up in CRM, and if I open up this particular survey, it's quite a basic one for demo purposes, but this can be configured to capture the information that's going to be relevant to you as a business and what should be logged after a case has been resolved with a particular customer. So this one just gives us a sort of view of the piece of information that can be captured. So we can rate the overall experience with dealing with the customer service representative. Was my issue resolved? Uh, yes, completely, still some work to do, uh, no. And then are there any other services we require? So this could possibly obviously feed into uh, another uh, service request that may be raised by the customer or uh, obviously a sales, um, a sales pitch. And once that has been submitted by the client, this information would then be captured uh, in CRM. Um, so if I jump into uh, the CRM system, 
If I look at uh, my resolved cases, so that case that I just completed, uh, and then the customer was uh, Matt Clark. So here we are on the contact record for uh, uh, Matt Clark. If I do the drop down here just to the right of them, I can see any surveys that this particular uh, contact has responded to. If I open up the survey responses, I can see here that yes, he has uh, responded to one of our surveys. If I open this up, I can then see his responses. And all of this information is capturable uh, and reportable from CRM. So uh, here I can see it's logged against the contact, but also the case that was, um, uh, was being worked on. If I scroll down, I can see all of his uh, responses. Uh, in this particular scenario, the case uh, was resolved. Uh, but if you say have a survey response that says that uh, says no to that particular answer, what you can do in the system is trigger workflows and actions for resources to follow up uh, and sort of discuss with the customer, uh, obviously how that interaction went, and what, and then it can be investigated as to why the actual case was closed from our, our perspective, uh, but not from the customers. So it gives you the ability to have that feedback loop. So outside of uh, the customer picking up the case and, uh, and resolving it, so the, um, the rep center picking up the case and resolving it, uh, you also get that feedback from the customer once that case has been closed uh, and it's locked and it's sort of um, it's closed from your perspective. <clears throat> and so that email we saw um, that was initially received by the customer was uh, pointing them to the new portal that we have set up. And this uh, portal gives us the ability to um, the customer's ability to create their own cases and also track the cases that they have uh, open with us. Uh, but also it gives the facility to customers to resolve cases uh, by themselves by giving them access to our knowledge base. Uh, and this is completely um, uh, configurable. So if I open up the uh, customer service portal. We see here it's taken me to a specific page for uh, this Contoso, this fictional company that we're working with, and has some information here around um, uh, the, uh, the printers that they sell and some of the queries that possibly could be answered. And this can all be uh, configured to restrict information to only uh, users who have actually logged in, so currently haven't logged into this portal. Uh, but this one's sort of open so anyone can, can access. So if I click Sign In, and I need to log in as my test user. It would then take me through to uh, their portal. So from here, uh, what I can do is, if I had that query that I emailed the, um, the business about earlier, uh, was, which was setting up the defaults for my printer. If I'd have gone to this, the, the portal uh, with the front end, I could have searched that query. So. And it's going to search the knowledge base and give me uh, the articles that it thinks are relevant for me. So I can see here that I have that one for setting the default printer in Windows 10. And I see that exact same article here. Um, so that gives me the ability to publish content um, and possibly steps uh, to users um, or our customers. Uh, to resolve cases for themselves. So before that they've come to our uh, customer service team, possibly for simple queries uh, or queries that could be resolved from one of these articles, we can publish that content to them so they're able to resolve the issues uh, themselves before it makes it through uh, to us. So we have that knowledge base here, which can be hosted on the on the website. And we also have the ability to set up forums. So depending on your industry uh, and how your uh, how you work, it may be relevant or not, uh, but that also gives the ability to set up areas where users can help other, or customers can help other customers, and people can uh, post their issues and have responses from customer service uh, representatives, but then also all of that information is then obviously reviewable and viewable by other customers. So if I there had posted that I have uh, an issue setting up my default printer in Windows 10 as a customer, and I had a response from a customer service representative, uh, as another customer coming into the portal, uh, I can see that whole interaction. So that may also answer the question for me before it actually comes through to our customer service team uh, and they have to sort of pick it up and, and run with it. And, and then we have the, the My Support area. So this is going to show us the tickets that I have raised uh, as, uh, as a customer and the ones that I have uh, open. 
and oh yeah also allow me to uh, raise uh, new cases so if I click the my support area here uh, I can see that it's showing me the cases that I currently have open uh, with the business by uh, the view here of my open cases so I have two cases open regarding um, the printer I can change this view here to show me the cases that I have that have been closed. So if I have, if I need to review some of the instances that I have raised and possibly the outcome of those instances, I can find all of that here and review that information. And it's also handy if you are dealing with companies uh, and they have multiple people raising cases with you. So if I'm the um, sort of relationship owner for that company with the uh, with yourselves. I can then view all the cases that have been opened by all of the people within inside my business against uh, your particular firm. So that gives me a view of sort of the volume of cases that we're raising, um, but also allows me to see who within the business is actually raising those uh, cases. I have to go back to all my cases. What we can do here is actually open a new case also. So, so that would then be logged in CRM and go through that flow that we've walked through from an email perspective, but this would do it from a um, through, from a web perspective. And the nice thing about having the uh, customers obviously create the case themselves through this portal is that we can define the pieces of information that they should be capturing when they open a case. So when we first initially picked up that email that was um, sent in by the customer we had to review the email first to understand what the um, issue was actually regarding and possibly reach out to them to get more information because they hadn't actually given us the full detail on the email itself what we can do with the portal uh, is uh, surface and make uh, particular data points required for the customer to input so when it actually gets picked up by the customer service representative they're 80% there in terms of the actual information that they need to know to understand what the particular uh, case is regarding so if I just go for an example here as I start to actually enter the title now uh, the title of the case is again going to show me those knowledge base articles that we had reviewed previously uh, just to give a final step before they actually log the case with you is to understand if they can actually uh, resolve this case themselves before uh, before it comes into your customer service team if not then we can start to they can start to capture all the pieces of information so if this is a problem again the subject regarding one of our subjects and then the description so more detail uh, printer gives error messages And one of the nice features here is they have the ability to attach files to that as well. So if I click uh, attach file, and submit. This case would then come through to um, uh, the case has been uh, submitted. So just get that confirmation. Uh, and then they can see here uh, now in their open cases that they have that case opened and it has been opened in the system at the time it was uh, opened uh, and then obviously if I go into that case I can see the more detail around that uh, and obviously make edits to that as well I can see here there's a bit of a timeline that starts to generate so as the um, as the customer service representative starts to update the uh, the case this would also be uh, updated and it also gives the um, person the customer the ability to close the case or, or cancel the case so it may be that they've uh, found the uh, the resolution out in the meantime and they would just like to close that case uh, so that gives them also the ability to do that here so it means the customer service representative doesn't need to sort of reach out to them and then pick up that particular uh, particular case um, so that's it from the um, sort of case process. There's one other area on the portal I'd just like to show you, and that's the, the profile for this particular customer. So if I jump onto this customer's profile, this is going to surface the information from this particular contact into, into the portal. Uh, but it also allows that contact the ability to maintain and manage their particular contact information themselves. So if their business phone number updates, they have the ability to enter that information themselves uh, and then save that. And then this will update uh, their particular contact in CRM. So it gives you the ability uh, to make, have uh, the customers that you're dealing with uh, update their information themselves. Um, so if you're reaching out to them, um, so, so it gives 
the ability to have their update, up-to-date information. And it's just a nice way um, for the customers to maintain uh, their own information so that your representatives uh, have the sort of correct phone numbers and emails for them um, to reach out to. So that's it from a customer service uh, sort of perspective. Uh, we looked at uh, the sort of key records in the system. Um, first of all, the sort of reporting around dashboards uh, and then the activities, so emails and phone calls, then sort of accounts and contacts, so the people that you're dealing with. And then we looked at the cases themselves, so the full case process, so starting from uh, an inbound email, taking that through to researching the case and then resolving the case and providing that information back to the customer and allowing them to then respond to a survey based on that interaction with us. So we have the ability to understand if that case was actually closed and possibly uh, react to it. Uh, and then we took a look at the uh, customer service portal, which uh, can be a front end for all of that information. So it gives the ability for the customer to review, uh, create and work with the cases that they have result, um, raised with uh, your business, uh, but also raise cases by them, um, sorry, resolve cases by themselves by uh, giving them the ability to access your knowledge base, either through uh, your generated content uh, in the knowledge base or potentially forums where uh, you can have other customers and, and uh, customer service representatives answering questions that come up from those customers uh, through the portal. Uh, so that's it for the demonstration. Now I'd just like to open it up to any uh, questions or queries that you may have uh, regarding that. Thanks, Matt. Um, we do have a few questions, actually. So um, I'm just going to remind people as we start answering the questions that you do still have some time to um, ask your questions. So go ahead and do those, um, put those into the control panel in the side there. Um, okay, so the first question that we have is, can CRM integrate with our customer service telephone system? Uh, yes, it can do. Um, so depending on your um, your telephony system, there are uh, add-ons available that would integrate uh, with that system. Um, and when you receive an inbound phone call, it would then sort of pull up the customer's information in CRM automatically for you uh, and then allow you to sort of create uh, and work with and resolve cases through uh, that integration. Um, so it is a nice feature uh, that uses that customer's phone number to pull up uh, the correct information for you from the system without you having to navigate and search for it. Okay, next question is, would we need to have a dedicated email for the auto lead slash case creating to work? We currently have individual leads for each staff member. Um, it can be set to uh, individuals' email addresses. It, it does mean that there are a lot of rules that need to be created in the system for have all of those uh, scenarios be uh, dealt with and picked up as the rule to create a case uh, is done by uh, a mailbox, uh, as individual mailbox, uh, but it is possible. It just means that there's a bit more admin for maintaining and creating all of those in the background. Uh, the ideal scenario is having a uh, one, one or, or, or multiple mailboxes that sort of all get uh, receive those emails, um, a sort of a generic mailbox. And you can also look at setting up possibly forwarding mailboxes to receive all of those emails uh, from the people that are receiving it and then creating them based on that forwarding mailbox. Okay. Uh, the next question is, can I purchase Microsoft Dynamics 365 via a subscription model? Um, I can take that one, Matt. Um, we do offer it both for on-premise and subscription. So it really comes down to uh, your business requirements and what your IT strategy is. But Emergence is able to offer both models. So that's not a problem. Um, the next question is, do you have CRM resources online? In fact, we do, uh, Matt being one of them. Um, so that's not a problem, both from an implementation and uh, support standpoint, uh, we do have uh, resources here on island and uh, overseas. So whatever works best for the client. Um, so it looks like we've covered all of our questions. Matt, is there anything else that you wanted to cover before we wrap up? No, that's it. Okay, great. Um, if you'd like to discuss your company's requirements in a bit more detail to see if Dynamics 365 for customer service would be a good fit for your organization, please contact either myself or Rob and we'll be happy to assist you with that. I also wanted to mention uh, that when we close the webinar, a survey is going to pop up on your screen. There are only five questions, uh, so it should take you really less than a minute to complete it. Uh, please complete the survey. Your feedback is really important to 
ensure that we're delivering the most relevant content for future webinars like this one. Um, we will be having another CRM webinar next Thursday. That one is going to focus on the marketing app. So I hope you'll be able to join us for that. If you're not signed up yet and you'd like to, you can do so by going to our website, emergencecorp.com, under our recent news section uh, on our homepage, or feel free to reach out to either Rob or myself and uh, we'll happily assist you in signing up. Finally, if you think others in your organization would get value from this webinar, a recorded version will be available and sent to you. So please feel free to share it with your colleagues. So thanks again, everybody, for joining us today. Thank you, Matt, uh, for the presentation. And we'll see you all next time.